future of WordPress. But basically, ask anything about WordPress, agency work, products, web development, Google, things like that. Um, bear in mind, everything they say is based on their own personal opinion. It's not on their companies. So just to make sure that everyone's got on the same page. <laughs> <laughs> All right, <laughs> so I'm going to introduce uh, myself. I'm the moderator. Um, I'm sort of a hands in uh, my fingers in many pies. I used to be a developer. I'm now doing a regional road with sales and accounting, uh, accounts, sorry, not accounting. Um, and uh, what else do I do? Oh, I do community work too. So um, I'm going to ask them a bunch of hard questions if you the guys don't ask anything. So, um, I'm going to get everyone to introduce themselves. They only have one mic, so bear with that. Um, Asif? Yeah. Um, my name is Asif. Uh, I am CEO of WeDevs. It's a WordPress product company. We created uh, several uh, WordPress plugins, uh, serving in a lot of different uh, other functions. And I work very closely uh, in content and content distribution. Uh, I spoke about like uh, why the speed and everything matters, and I'm personally working with the WordPress ecosystem for almost 13 years. I started using WordPress since 2004, and I love these conversations like what uh, we as a, like uh, plugin uh, business people or plugin developers feel is WordPress is going uh, in which direction and what we will see in 2018 after Gutenberg. And also, maybe horse uh, the future lies in 2020 or even be beyond. Uh, thank you. Thank you. We have Zion. I wrote you as PHP expert from Singapore. Yeah. Hi, my name is uh, Zion. I, uh, as you said, I'm from uh, Singapore. I'm a Zen certified engineer. So uh, I currently a uh, senior software engineer at a startup. We kind of do like mobile apps uh, for clients such as uh, Kofu or uh, Buntongki. Um, so I dabbled a bit with uh, other languages like uh, a bit of uh, Android, a little bit of Java, uh, Ruby, but mainly uh, PHP. So WordPress I use mostly on a personal basis. Uh, some years back when I was doing freelancing, uh, I used WordPress for my clients as well. Yeah. Next we have Moriyama Mayuko from Japan. Hello, <laughs> uh, I'm my Mariama, and I'm a freelance web developer, and I work by myself. And um, I <laughs> she uh, does a lot of community work, like mentors, uh, yes. work camps. Um, yes. She helps meetups survive and grow into something bigger. She travels around Asia to make sure that everyone gets the help they deserve uh, uh, as much as from the foundation as possible. <laughs> Did I get it? Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Easy. So, Jenny? Hi, guys. I'm Jenny. I think among all the other people here, I'm probably the most beginner when it comes to WordPress. Uh, so personally, I a blog. I'm a blogger as well. I like to blog about my travel journey, and I just recently moved to WordPress. But I Good know choice. that's not that's not interesting. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but like uh, professionally, I work for Google. I work with a lot of web publishers, uh, particularly for actually for the whole Southeast Asia, but particularly for Indonesia and Philippines. And if if I can say, seventy percent of my publishers are using WordPress. So yeah, that's that's me and WordPress. It's a good choice. Thank you. Thank you. I guess Thanks that you leads, that, that leaves Just me. Just listen to her, I guess. Um, I'm a former freelancer. I was going to say reformed freelancer. <laughs> um, I've been working with WordPress uh, basically since 2008. And um, I built a lot of websites. And now I help other people build websites as a project manager for Human Made. That's a lovely description. So they're here to answer any of your questions about agency, products, WordPress, maybe how Google works with WordPress, um, how um, PHP uh, you know, uh, handles WordPress, you know, definitely development to products, to community stuff, the, well, from the hard topics to the user topics. Project so, management. and project management, definitely. Right, so um, if you've got questions about a JavaScript, that might work too, within WordPress, right? So, anyone's got any questions? 
Yeah. There's a mic coming to you. Hello, everyone. Is it um, on? Not yet. Hello. Uh, so I want to ask that uh, for a blog to be very famous and to earn money, uh, should it be a business blog only? Or it can be like a story, poems, or a philosophical kind of a blog? I don't want to answer that question. I don't know the answer. So can I repeat? You, you, your main goal is revenue. Is that true? Yeah. I uh, mean, so uh, and uh, if it has to get famous and uh, okay. well noted. So there's a lot of pathways that you can do. Um, when if your if your goal is revenue, there are certain depending on the pathway that you want. Uh, some publisher they look for niche topic. They are currently underserved. So in the way that they don't really have much competitor, they have the market share for that topic, and then will be even a plus if that topic is the kind of topic that is bidded by the advertiser, and you can make significant amount of money out of that. And there's also publishers that write out of their hobby. So um, because their quality content, even though the topic, uh, even though the vertical is, has a lot of competitors, but because the fact that they're passionate about it, they are an expert on the topic, people still choose for that website. And there's also people who want uh, to easily get a lot of page views. So even though that topic probably are not beaten by the advertiser that much. So it depends on what you like and what you think is your strength. If you feel that you are, you are, it, your strength is building exposure, then getting a lot of page view to get a lot of revenue probably the good pathway. But if you think that your strength is a certain particular topic that may be quite niche, still create for it anyway because there might not be much competition. People are looking for it. There's a demand for it. And even best, maybe advertiser, advertiser actually bidding for it. So I hope that answer your questions. Oh, okay, thanks a lot. Welcome. <laughs> yeah, yeah, Follow-up answer? Yeah. Please. So le let me talk from the content perspective. Uh, just two weeks ago uh, in WordCamp Ahmedabad, I had this session. Actually, the title of the talk, people will explain. Uh, the title of the topic was like, we all say the content is the king, but if you don't know the distribution, you will not actually reach anywhere. So I, I, content is very important. Uh, it's very creative. It could go to a long length. But at the same time, you need to understand your demography. You need to do everything right in terms of the description. So you could create your first blog post. Nobody will read it if you don't distribute it properly. And there are so many lies. There are so many like wrong information online about SEO. So AC, and it, that's a very important to getting found in the online. So the important part will be like uh, instead of trying to cheat Google to rank better in search, it's very important to do it properly. So y you could like uh, really read uh, write for like uh, normal people, not for the bots, not for the Google uh, Google bot and other things. So that will be the main goal. I have a question with uh, Jeannie. Uh, can you please help me with this question? Uh, you know, log into Google AdWords, right? You're able to see the CPM rate and all the demand. Uh, that is a good, uh, like, because the lady asked, was asking how to get famous and revenue. Is that a good uh, data source or to check whether the topic or niche? Because you know, you, your Google AdWords is quite powerful and they've got the niche, yeah, got the keywords. So, do you recommend that to check for the niche? Research on a niche that we should go into. Do you think Google AdWords for uh con for AdSense when you this is the reverse way of like you check the demand for Well if you have a uh, AdWords account you can always do that or you can even use the Google Keyword Planner that I think our friends from Damien, Damien Oh was sharing. Um, but in case you're wondering, um, is there like any tool to specifically looking at the RPM? We will say no because the reason why it's demands and supply is the one that determining the revenue per impressions, right? So if we state A, currently there is no demand and people hear about it and then people write about it, suddenly supply increase. It's just like stock market. The price will decrease. So that's why um, it is something that is really dynamic, I would say. So again, uh, one thing that I will emphasize and one thing that maybe I really like about Damien Oz's presentation is that First, um, always focus about the users 
and then write something that you're really passionate about, not for the short term, but for the long term. Because if you're always looking for the content that has a high RPM, it takes some time for you to create that content to get the traffic. And then maybe if, let's say, the RPM happened to drop, you haven't got the yield yet, you won't receive anything. So always have the right motivation first. Okay, thank you. Uh, I have a second question for... Uh, huh? I have a second question for D, which uh, who is... Uh, also, uh, expert in the uh, project management. Do you, do you, how do I utilize Google Apps? Do you, uh, for like uh, outsourcing, offshore outsourcing? Uh, this is a more direct, more targeted question. Do you do you think a uh, Google Apps right? Uh, no, G Suite right. There's a Google G Suite. Uh, how have you experienced in outsourcing offshore with G Suite? Do you think it works? Have I ex have I experienced yes. outsourcing using G Suite? Yes. Yes. Google. No. What software do you use for, uh, don't mind you share, what software do you recommend for um, your projects? Okay, now that's a question I can answer. <laughs> it varies from project to project. So um, for some clients we're using Jira, which is, so we're working at an enterprise level and that Jira is great, but it's huge and heavy and difficult to configure and, and kind of a pain. So it does all of the things that we need it to do. It's just difficult to get there. Um, so next level down, we use Zen Hub, which is if we're working on a software project and we're using a repo in GitHub, Zen Hub is a layer over the top of that that helps add project management tools, and that's really, really useful. Um, it's free if you're using an open, doing it on an open source project. Um, you pay per user if you're doing it on a private repo. But that's really, really helpful. And in terms of using um, uh, Kanban boards and all that kind of stuff, ZenHub's got you covered. And the third one um, that I also use is Asana. Um, that is free um, for a small, small agencies. Um, you can invite clients into that so they can actually, you can use it as an issue tracker. You can, you can actually use boards because we use Kanban and Scrum boards um, to manage visually your projects. So those are the three, uh, Jira, Zen Hub, Asana. There are so many out there. You just often have to find the one that works for you, but those three are really good places to start. So I'm going to ask a question to um, Zion. So I often um, see um, that uh, WordPress is not viewed as the best software. Even by the people who are writing PHP, uh, where WordPress is, you know, strongly based on. So, how does the PHP community view WordPress in Singapore, Zion? You know the answer. Well, right? yeah. <laughs> Gotta ask him. Okay, I don't really have a concrete answer to this. Uh, so we know that WordPress powers about twenty percent, twenty-seven percent of the websites in the world. And uh, but the problem is, we do not know how the distribution is like. Is it mostly in the US? or in Europe or in Southeast Asia. For example, in Japan, it's quite easy to, to check the stats because uh, they probably use uh, Japanese uh, translation. And uh, it'll be easy to check, okay, so many users, uh, so many WordPress sites in Japan, but not so in Singapore. Now, uh, in Singapore, unfortunately, probably uh, there's kind of mentality where you want cheap, good, fast. So uh, in Hokkien, we call it IPICIHO. So basically, sometimes uh, we have more users than probably developers or wannabe developers. Probably some uh, secondary school kid say, okay, let me just download WordPress uh, and I will set it up and then, okay, uh, I'll set it up for a client and I earn my pocket allowance. So the um, WordPress is, in, is intimately linked to PHP. So let me talk about PHP also. In uh, developers' eyes, PHP seems to have a bad impression. When you mention PHP or WordPress, people say, mm, yeah, no good. Uh, that's because PHP and WordPress is easy to pick up. Now let me give you an analogy. Let's give a ballpoint pen versus a Chinese calligraphy pen, a uh, brush brush. Now a ballpoint pen is very easy to use. If you pick it up, you start writing. Anyone can do it, even a two-year-old kid. But the two-year-old kid handwriting will look terrible. Um, but there are some people who can actually use a pen to create artwork like Zentangle, so they can create uh, masterful uh, masterpieces. Whereas for a Chinese calligraphy brush, by the time you can even manage to write legibly, 
uh, you look as if it has a certain sense of quality. So people say, oh, well, this is a very good instrument. I should learn calligraphy brush. But if the person using the brush doesn't upgrade himself, doesn't continue to improve or learn, his standard will stay there. Whereas a person using a ballpoint pen, if he continues to improve himself and to pick up new skills, new design patterns, uh, and to learn from others, he will, his penmanship will look much more better than the person using the brush. So, and the question is, if in, let's say in your childhood years, you are told that you have to use a calligraphy brush to pick up writing instead of a ballpoint pen, how many of you will actually give up? So it's, it is a question actually, because PHP and WordPress is so easy to pick up, and everyone's picking it up, so there are varying standards of quality. So it leads to this impression, say, oh, so many PHP websites, PHP powers about 82% of the websites in the world, but some of them got vulnerable, uh, vulnerable attacks, but we do not know the developers behind them. So the key thing is actually, uh, a programming tool like PHP, a CMS and WordPress is ultimately a uh, tool. The key thing is about problem solving, solving a problem. So you have to choose the correct tool. So actually, the question how uh, the local PHP developers uh, think about WordPress is, yeah, they are just using it, uh, I would think, superficially. No one is actually doing like deep work. Uh, like the US, the United States, the White House, they are using WordPress to power their website. Not so for the Singapore government. Uh, you don't really see a big WordPress agency in Singapore actually serving the enterprises. All of them like probably freelancers uh, <coughs> and probably small companies. Oh, okay, uh, no, his company is quite good. Yes. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yeah, but that's a great answer. Lovely. Yeah. Good. yeah. Love yeah. Okay, so this one is going to be a longer question. Oh, sorry. Go yeah, ahead. I have a question for Jenny. Um, yeah, so this is, is on it, AMP. It's all yeah. going to be about SEO, right? <laughs> yeah, um, so I know that uh, Google is uh, in, uh, increasingly integrating the AMP with the search results, right? So basically, uh, the sites are opening up within a Google shell by default, and uh, you will have to click, make an extra click to go to the website itself. Is there a way to, because I know Google does it, uh, you don't have a control over when Google does it to your website, is there a way to opt out of it? Meaning that not open inside the shell, but open your website instead. Is there a way to do it? Um, so first thing first, let's take a step back and see why is that done so. So the reason why it's open on Google Shell, because it's enabled the AMP catch to happen. So it makes the website to launch almost instantly when user click on the Google search result. And of course, um, as a developer, you have the right um, to remove it. All you need to do is that you just need to break the, the link between Canonical with the AMP HTML. But I strongly not recommending it because it defeats the purpose of you having an AMP website. And also just want to highlight just in case um, you are not aware, even though they go to the Google shell, actually publishers have the credit to, the, to that traffic. And then you can still see the analytics content if you use AMP-analytics, just as a normal thing that you see on uh, Google Analytics. And then also, um, actually, there's a lot of feedbacks from you guys as well to make it easier to uh, go into the canonical page instead of the AMP page. And in fact, Google has been doing a lot of adjustment to that. Since January 2017, if you share the, the page, you can quickly go to the canonical page. And if you're sharing that page to uh, your messengers, to your email, the one that is being shared is actually the canonical page instead of the AMP page. So to, to wrap up, it's possible to do that. You just need to remove the link between AMP and the canonical, but it will defeat the purpose. Yeah. I hope that answered the questions. Thank you. Welcome. So my turn, right? <laughs> <laughs> So I want to know a little bit about the WordPress communities in the various countries. I purposely make sure there's a Japanese, Bangladesh, Singapore. Well, she was born in Indonesia and Australia. Yeah. So, um, okay. So tell us a little bit about the WordPress communities in your country, starting from Mayoko. But this is a long topic. I want it in 10 sentences or less. <laughs> Tell me, uh, tell us a little bit about the WordPress communities in your country. Mm, easy question. <laughs> yeah, there's no question. Just tell me. Yeah. 
community? Uh, yeah, how, how would you huge. describe the Japanese community? Japanese community? Yes. Uh, yes. Uh, uh, where can I start? <laughs> but, uh, uh, I already talked uh, today, but we, uh, we started translation of WordPress over 10 years ago. Uh, I didn't uh, I didn't start it WordPress at that time, but I heard the st story, and they started first WordCamp like 2008, I think, and uh, we had WordCamp this year, and there was 800 people, and yeah, so communities. Thousand, I think. Eh? Thousand. Yeah, Tokyo, yeah. And uh, Kyoto also had work camp, and I heard uh, 350 or something. So, yeah, we, we have two work camps mm -hmm. this year. And uh, and in this room, uh, we, we, we I can see a lot of uh, book, pub book authors <laughs> and plugin authors. They also come to this work camp. So yeah, our community has a lot of yeah. How many percent of uh, websites are WordPress in Japan? Uh, yes. Uh, mm. uh, I saw the stats about uh, CMS website, which use Japanese. Uh, they use eight hundred eighty percent. Oh, awesome. WordPress, yes. Yeah. So it's a lot, and it's basically uh, our base in Asia, WordPress, <laughs> <laughs> and uh, and whole WordPress user, uh, six percent use uh, Japanese version. Nice. So yeah, it's big like number. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Yes. So uh, if you uh, realize there's this little um, creature thing that looks <laughs> a little bit like Pikachu, <laughs> but it's not Pikachu. Um, and every country and every work camp, we create one based on the local city. So the one this time we have, well, it's based on our theme, which is towards the future. So it's a Roboto Wapu. So you've got a sticker. And they have made uh, what a Kenshin Wapu. Uh, well, Maka Wapu and so on, <laughs> but the designer came from Japan, the first ever, the original Wapu. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> cool. Um, what about you, Asif? Yeah. Ten sentences or less. <laughs> okay. um, Bangladesh has a very big WordPress community. I remember, like in back in 2014, WordCamp San Francisco, I spoke about. Uh, our community and why I am involved in WordPress that much. In that time, I shared an stat that in 2014, only in Odesk, there was over 40,000 WordPress programmer only from Bangladesh. Wow. So WordPress is extremely popular in Bangladesh. If you ask me the same question, like how many percentage, I would say probably over 90%. We have successfully popularized WordPress in Bangladesh. We have uh, successful WordPress meetup groups. Uh, in some of our meetup, we have like over 400 people. And yes. because our, our venue could not support that, so we had to limit in 150 or something. Yeah. We have not had any work camps yet. We are trying to work on that. I applied for almost four years ago. We have right. some issues and going back and forth. I hope like it will happen very soon, yeah. maybe she in 2018. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they're, they're all helping. And we have a lot of like plugin developers, and especially theme developers, developing themes in Theme Forest. And there's a uh, good analogy, like in the US, if you go to a bank, if you ask a banker, like, do you know WordPress? Most of the people will not. But in Dhaka, if you go to a like educated person who understand web, if you ask him, do you know WordPress? They will know, hey, yeah, I know WordPress. If I want to make a blog, I will make it in WordPress. So WordPress is very popular in Bangladesh. And we are looking forward to have a good WordCamps in future as well. Thank you. Awesome. It's very cool. You should teach us. Yeah, actually, the, um, the organizer of the WordPress Singapore Meetup is standing at the rostrum. He will actually be answer the question better. Uh, so actually, I attended, started attending meetups uh, about two years ago when I was doing freelancing. And uh, I also help, started helping out with uh, engineers.sg, our, our certain guys who are recording uh, WordCamp this year. So sometimes I have to record work, uh, the WordPress Meetup. So Compared to the other tech meetups in Singapore, WordPress meetup actually has a kind of good mix of uh, developers and uh, what we call lay people, uh, non-techies. So you have some people who are starting their blogs, uh, who are going to do business, you want to do e-commerce, you want to find out more about WordPress. Uh, so usually the numbers, uh, 
think about 20, 20 plus, is that correct? Yeah, yeah, he's nodding, so it should be correct. <laughs> oh, sorry? The numbers, uh, you said about 20 plus, right? Or 20? Well, I'll say 30 is a nicer number. The biggest we had was 80 per mm. meter. Yeah, but that's because it's SEO related. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> uh, yes. Um, All right. Thank you. Yeah, I'm nervous now because I'll be very honest with you guys. This is the first work camp I ever attended. Yay. <laughs> so I did mention to you guys that I moved to WordPress recently. Do you want to know why? Yeah. So um, in a Google's perspective, I just had AMP Roadshow in Indonesia where there's a lot of website owners. When we asked who used WordPress, 50% raised their hand. So wow. that's like a benchmark. And then I personally work with AdSense publisher, meaning that publisher that monetize their content with Google AdSense. And about 70% of my publisher actually using WordPress. And that motivates me to move to WordPress. Nice. <laughs> so did you move from Blogger? Uh, confidential. Because <laughs> <laughs> that would be tricky. <laughs> oh, I work for Google, but I don't blog on Blogger. <laughs> I um, I'm a New Zealander and I live in Australia, but I've lived there for so long, and most of my WordPressing has happened in in Australia. The WordPress community, much like the population of Australia, is 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 actually not huge, um, and is spread around the main centres. So we have WordPress meetups in all of the main centres: Sydney, Brisbane. Melbourne, where I live, God, um, uh, Adelaide and Perth. And we have at least one or two word camps every year. Um, next year, I believe there are going to be word camps in both Sydney and Brisbane. We keep getting some pressure to have a word camp in Melbourne. Um, if you want to help me organise that, go right ahead, because um, I'm not going to organise it on my own. So, um, and, and there are WordPresses, <laughs> it gets competitive a lot with by um, Adobe in Australia, I think, in a lot of cases, certainly at the kind of scale that we're operating at. So, um, yeah, I mean, but the community itself was really active and engaged. Um, we have about two and a half thousand people on our mailing list in Melbourne, but, um, and, but the number of people that show up to a meetup varies between kind of 50 to 60 um, month by month. Thank you. Yeah, so we got uh, two. We got actually no time, but uh, I'm going to take two more questions from the crowd. You just have lesser time to eat, but I bet most of you are very full from lunch. So I think we're fine there. So anyone wants to ask any questions, preferably not SEO related. <laughs> yes. Okay. Uh, this is probably for Zion, the Zion, Zion. <laughs> uh, okay, WordPress started when. Um, PHP was version 4 point something and then it got stuck with version 5.6 for a few years and recently people have been uh, we have seen increased adoption of version 7 how, how would this affect WordPress users and also developers and how will it affect the near future of WordPress okay talking about PHP 7 um, so WordPress has uh, kept itself up to date so moving to PHP 7 will be no problem uh, PHP 7 versus PHP 5.6 itself, that's a two times increase, even let's say just by changing the PHP version. You are not changing your code, you are just changing the PHP version, your code will run about at least two times faster. This has been tested uh, even like in you know, WordPress, even like Magento or other uh, popular CMS systems. So for PHP 7 by itself comes with a lot of uh, nice uh, new features, uh, error reporting and uh, catching of errors, uh, syntax parsing. So actually, you and a lot of vulnerabilities have been patched. Of course, it's still ongoing. So one thing is uh, PHP is easier to stay. If you get a domain hosting, let's say, with, uh, uh, with your own domain name, let's say, uh, uh, WordCamp.com, uh, you can't default with uh, the LAMP stack, Linux, Apache, MySQL, and PHP. Uh, and that doesn't cause anything extra for you to uh, upload PHP file or set up WordPress. So going in the future, actually this is good. Uh, there was some time where people think that PHP is dying. So like even Facebook came out with a new VVM uh, for PHP to kind of, uh, because they find PHP insufficient. But with PHP 7, now Facebook says that, okay, HVVM, uh, we can kind of retire it. We probably use it internally. Uh, so 
uh, some of features have already been merged in PHP 7. So it's a good way forward. So uh, WordPress is based on PHP. And of course, uh, this will bring WordPress in the future as well. Thanks. Yeah, so I'd like to add a little bit of that at the WordPress.org level. So um, uh, we have been engaging uh, the, web, the web hosts around the world to make sure they upgrade from 5.5, 5.6 or worse to 7. Honestly, there's no reason not to upgrade because WordPress is incredibly backwards compatible. Um, and when we do patch, we make sure it still somehow works for older PHP versions. And if you are still on 5.5, that's not supported anymore. It's insecure. If you're on 5.6, that's almost going to be not supported soon. So, yeah, you should move to 7. Like, you know, you update your apps, right? Update everything. Yeah. So, um, that, should I not update everything? No, no, no. <laughs> I just know that I've gone from 7 point something to 7.7 yeah. 7 and 7 my one? I can't, I'll yeah. up whatever right. the latest, so I've gone from one yeah. to the other. So I'm on okay. 7. I go to the next one yeah. and my site won't load. So I'm like, Probably one of the bad the plugins. Least, well, it's a thing or a plugin. Yeah. So then yeah. you have to kind of do all that yeah. stuff. So, so don't, what I'm saying is, don't do it live. <laughs> yes. Good. Yes, we should upgrade, but yeah. don't, yeah, don't do it live. Do it in staging before you actually yes. go there. Agreed. Very strongly. Um, so, Last question. All right, then I get to ask mine. So tough one. What do you think WordPress will be in 2020? I want a one-liner. I don't want a big paragraph. Everyone give me a one-liner. Who's ready to speak? I don't know the answer to this question. <laughs> dashboard will be customized people will create and like team developer will create their own dashboard so it will not look like wordpress mm -hmm. uh, the theme will be almost plugin or like it it will be more uh, like page builders so what piece will be very different in 2020 awesome he's basically taken off your answers <laughs> okay my answer will definitely be the wordpress uh, rest api it opens up a lot of new possibilities. So right now, as a developer, instead of uh, coming out with my own custom database, my own custom CMS to power my new mobile app, so right now I can just write an Android app and iOS app that actually uh, is reading off the WordPress REST API. In fact, actually, uh, there's an app on the App Store called Nomad Base. So uh, first version was done using React JS, and the second version was done using React Native. And they are actually calling the WordPress uh, REST API. So it's running a WordPress backend. So you don't need a techie guy to run SQL statements to key in data into a database. You can have your marketing uh, personnel just go into the super user friendly interface in WordPress, key in your data, and it automatically appears in your app. Simple and easy. Thank you for advertising my product. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yes. I made them do it. <laughs> <laughs> okay, but he didn't want explain what Nomad Base is. If you are traveling and you are a you know, developer, writer, whatever, you want to meet people um, who travel as well, that's the app for you to meet them. It's not for dating, right? It's just to meet working friends. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds like there's a story there. There is. <laughs> Testing one, two, three, four. I, I was thinking, uh, 2020, WordPress. Yes. Mm, okay, I'll mm, from translation view. Sure. <laughs> you know, uh, there are a lot of uh, you know, uh, like 10 years ago, nobody consider about translation, but now we have a lot of language like 180 something I forgot but maybe maybe I'm not sure google it please <laughs> but so so yeah so yeah uh, now uh, most theme or plugin uh, is not translated yet but uh, we want to translate 100 percent then for most language then so you know uh, for people who don't speak English, it's more than English speaker. 
in the mm. world. So, mm -hmm. so if we want to make WordPress uh, barrier free, <laughs> so we we have to do that. I think. Nice. <laughs> so you think that 2020 translations would be close mm. to 100 <laughs> uh, percent, and like a Japanese person, instead of downloading the 10 teams that are translated, <laughs> they can download. 5,000 themes they are on WordPress.org. <laughs> Big job, <laughs> depending on you. <laughs> and I think we have Ginny and D. I think in 2020, I see huge potential for WordPress to scale because I see a lot of um, entrepreneurs, content creators that are currently offline, especially in emerging market they start to look into go online. I see WordPress as a huge potential to enable them to do that easily. Thank you. It's a really, um, really good way of looking at it. I see, because so much of what I do is at enterprise level, I see there being more events and things happening for WordPress at enterprise level, not just small and medium business. So I'd I, I'm hopeful that in the next couple of years, Certainly locally in our kind of regions, not just in the US, we'll, we'll see more and more conversation happening there and see more and more adoption of WordPress at Enterprise. Nice. That'd be great. Yeah, in the US you have a WordCamp for publishers. Maybe one year we'll do it like a WordCamp for banks, publishers and so on. That'll be super awesome. Yeah. Cool. Um, so uh, that's all for the AMA. Um, they are still around, catch them and ask them anything. Um, try not to, you know, about WordPress. It's not just all about SEO. <laughs> all right, so thank you for attending. Um, I'm going to hand it back to uh, Shao. And thank you, speakers. Thank you, Dee. Thank you, uh, Ginny, Zion, Asif, and Mayuko. Okay, so right now we'll go for a tea break. We'll come